Hello, this is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek. And unfortunately, I haven't been making too many videos lately because I've been busy on other things. But I'm happy to say my annual pilgrimage to LA and Vegas is coming up. And this year is a big year because I'm expanding some of the aspects of Cine Tech Geek. And I'm covering a lot more of the production side and some of the technical aspects of making films, not just displaying films. But I'm still covering CinemaCon. But let's quickly go over what's going to happen at NAB this year that should be of interest. And this year, in the last number of years, I've been quite active in the SIMTI community and the standards bodies. And there's a number of standards that the SIMTI community is start, starting to float to the service, surface that has a, a real impact on how we may make films or store films and, and produce our films post-production-wise and camera-wise in the near future. So this year I'm going to NAB and I'm talking to post houses, um, camera com companies, and I'm going to approach them and ask them about these standards. Now, just to go over what some of them are, there's things like uh, VC5, which is basically an unencumbered ProRes or DNxHD type implementation, but with some better afterthought and more advantages than those codecs. And I, I actually find, uh, think that it'll be... Uh, very good improvement. Some aspects of how it works with RAW is going to open the doors to um, using RAW type workflows much easier. So that's very interesting and, and welcome to have a look at. You've got IMF. Now IMF, of course, I've mentioned in the past and that's very interesting because it's basically trying to um, fix the uh, pr proliferation of deliverables, uh, being that you need a master for different parts of the the world, different countries with different formats. Uh, IMF is hoping to create a more of a, a, a more encompassing type deliverable that um, does that job on a much better all-encompassing sort of way. It's a reasonably complex um, thing to get your head around but when you do it's, it's, it's amazing and there's a lot of work going there and uh, we should see if the companies are starting to move in that direction because it, it's definitely where we're likely to go. Um, other aspects is a bit early, but I want to talk about, about high dynamic range with the vendors because um, it's pretty much the hot topic at the moment, but um, there's still it's still very early and there's still a lot of questions. Um, high dynamic range seems to be more driven by the vendors and the TV manufacturers who want something else to sell their TVs for while there's still a lot of work and the cinema has been neglected and that's a bit strange because you might have TVs which can produce high dynamic range type high dynamic range type pictures but until the cinema industry can actually produce and have a pipeline which gives us a, a known and measured type of way to get to a high dynamic range type result it, it means nothing it's the, the horse before the cart sort of you know we've got to figure out how this all works so I wanted to ask some of the vendors what they thought about this how they see it working in cinema with the different levels of the light levels etc aren't as nearly as bright as the emissive screens that you would get with LCD screens etc it's a complex argument we'll go into it more uh, in those videos um, so that's mainly it simply there's a few other aspects there to discuss and, and just to see what the vendors have to say about any of that sort of thing. In terms of CinemaCon, well, CinemaCon's a little bit quieter this year, but there is, uh, I did post a, write a post on Celluloid Junkie of late about how blue, blue pump phosphor laser projectors are coming on strong by all the other manufacturers and that's likely to change or could transition, you know, bring us into a new digital transition as... Um, Xeon lamps may start to well, fade away or become less used and there'll be a tipping point where they that might uh, actually um, you know there might be a tipping point there again like there was with film and that's something we need to look into and discuss and I'll probably look into that a lot this year as well as uh, there might be some more room with immersive audio but that seems to be going quite slow in the standards body so I don't expect too much movement there and anything else new that pops up at CinemaCon. Um, so I hope I can cover those with some videos and um, keep everyone up to date on what is coming and um, how it's going to affect you. You know, th this is an important stage. Yes, we may have converted to digital now uh, and that was a massive job but now we are digital, there's a lot more potential possibilities and po potential developments and 
you know, we want to take more care in what paths we walk down now that we are here because we don't want to waste our money on any particular implementations or standards which don't actually go anywhere. So um, good, good idea to keep an eye on that. I hope you enjoy my videos on that. I uh, appreciate any support. If you're going to be at CinemaCon, please come up and say hello. Um, I really appreciate hearing from people who, who uh, appreciate my efforts in trying to move this industry forward and with uh, you know informed decisions and people knowing why they're buying the equipment and what's, what's best for them, uh, making the right decisions on, on what the equipment does and how it works for them uh, in certain situations. Some equipment's better for one way, etc. And uh, I just really believe in informed decisions. So... I hope you enjoy my videos. That's James Gardner, Cinetech Geek, soon to be at NAB and CinemaCon. Catch you there. Bye.